Hey readers, I thought I would share with you all of the books that I've read the last two months for our Mod Heart Loveless Readers Committee. We're um, reading books to nominate for the next school year, not this school year coming up, but the next school year's um, Mod Heart Loveless books for um, the Minnesota Book Award. So I have a whole pile of books and I thought I'd just quickly tell you about the ones that I've read and what I scored them. So we'll start with um, just my favorite one of all. I did a, already did a review on this, a video review on this that you can refer to as well. It's called The Miscalculations of Lightning Girl by Stacy McAltney. I'm not exactly sure how to say her name. I think in the video before I called her McNulty, but um, this is just a fun, funny read, but it's also um, inspiring and a little quirky, and I just really liked it. It's about a girl who um, gets um, electrocuted, really, on a playground during a, a storm, and um, her brain um, compensates for the loss of um, brain cells because she was out for about five minutes by giving her more um, math ability, and she's basically um, just a genius in that area. Um, so that's what the story is about. And she's having, she's been in homeschool for most of her elementary years, but her grandmother who takes care of her and is her um, guardian says, you need to go to middle school. And of course, middle school stories are always really interesting. Um, just a fun read and an inspiring read and a friendship book. So I highly recommend this one, The Miscalculations of Lightning Girl. Out of Left Field by Ellen Clagus. I have read her first book. It's, it's kind of like a trilogy, but you do not have to read the other two books. In fact, I was reading this. I was like, these characters sound very familiar. And I had to think back to the very first book I read years ago. But it's about a girl who really is, it's about 1948, I think it is. 1957. And she wants to play on a little league team, but they won't let her because she is a girl. She gets really mad. And so she starts to um, try to make a case for girls playing little league by researching all of the girls or women who played um, for women's baseball, especially during the 30s and 40s. And so you meet a lot of those um, characters. She researches a lot of them and, she, and you meet some of them along the way. Um, so this is a girl feminist sports story that was very entertaining. Um, out of Left Field. I gave this one a four as well by Jamie Sumner. It's called Roll With It. And it's about a girl who has cerebral palsy and she is in a wheelchair. Her mother and her um, live in Nashville and they decide to go to a small town. I think it's Oklahoma or one of those middle states to help their grandmother because their grandfather has Alzheimer's or dementia. And now they're in a small um, trailer house and nothing is um, handicapped accessible and her school isn't handicapped accessible and her mother is a little frustrated with all this. But in the midst of this, I think her name is Ellie. She, um, yes, Ellie, she finds friendship and she um, also loves to bake. So. She's holding a pie for a reason, but she finds these friends that she never had in her um, town in Nashville. And she's just a happy-go-lucky girl trying to make it um, without a lot of sympathy or pity. She is just independent and fierce and fun. So this is called Roll With It by Jamie Sumner. This is called The Rhino in Right Field. I was saying this one would be a good... Um, one to go along with this book. They, um, this one is also about baseball. Boys are playing baseball in um, Wisconsin. In the back, there's a note about um, with Milwaukee, Wisconsin used to have a zoo and then the kids would play baseball right near it. And then um, uh, no, probably baseballs would end up in the zoo as well. And so that's what the story is based on. They don't say it's Milwaukee in here, but the author's note mentions it. Anyway, the boys play baseball or soft, no, it's baseball. And um, they have, they, sometimes the ball goes in the rhino's um, fence and they climb over and get the ball. Isn't this cute, this back cover too? <laughs> anyway, but it's basically about these boys. Um, 1948, I think it is, their father, parents, um, this boy's parents are um, immigrants from Greece and are working hard and 
he never gets to leave on Saturday and he wants to go to a contest that the um, Mud Pies, which is a, a baseball team in their town, is having a contest to see who can be a, a bat boy. And he just, you know, has to forge his way through it, trying to figure out how he can um, become a bat boy for the Mud Pies. And along the way, he meets some um, other characters that are struggling and striving. And it's just a historical fiction book and a, a um uh, sports book and there's also uh, mention of the women that are playing baseball because in the story one of the girls is really good at baseball and they won't let her um, try out for the sh um, bat boy team or bat boy um, job because she's a girl and then they find out that her sister is in one of those women's teams so she gets to play a part in this story as well so the rhino in right field historical fiction as well as a sports book. The next one is called Coop Knows the Scoop by Taryn Souders. Now, this book is a cozy fiction or cozy mystery. If I, if the character, the main character who was solving the mystery was an adult, it would be an adult cozy mystery. You know, cozy mysteries are the ones that aren't too gruesome or too terrifying, just enough. In this story, um, a small town in the South is doing, um, getting ready of all the stuff on the playground and starting over. And when they dig up the slides underneath it, they find a body. When they investigate, the body turns out to be Cooper's grandfather's wife, who has been missing since um, his father was a, a, a infant or maybe a little boy. And so the mystery um, starts where they have to investigate his grandfather and Coop is determined that his grandfather is not guilty even though they take him down to the station. So he starts to investigate with a couple of other his friends in town. Um, Coop knows a scoop. I really enjoyed this one too. Um, and I gave it a four. The next book is called A Place to Belong by Cynthia Katahata. And this is a really smart book about a time period that we don't really have a lot of books about. And it's just good to know. This is about a girl named Hannah and her family who are Japanese American. And they've been sent to an internment camp in the United States. And they have just not been treated very well at all. So they decide to go back to Japan. And when they do, the ship... Um, trip for just to go across the seas is just a terrible trip and then when they get there they see what Hiroshima has happened to it with the bombing and they get to their grandparents home and they are so poor despite that their grandparents are a delight and very charming um, but they just really struggle now it's a kind of a quiet book and it reads a little like a, it's a little it doesn't always explain everything so I think um, this would be a great story for it a teacher or a parent to read with a child. I don't know if they would catch on to all of the things that it was trying to say, or even um, not knowing a lot about World War II or Japanese internment camps. You might need a little bit more background for it, but I just found it delightful. It read very childlike though. It doesn't read um, like a really sophisticated young adult book at all. It is um, her through eyes, her eyes, it's very childlike. So a Place to Belong by Cynthia Katahata. I just recommend this highly for everybody. The only reason I give it four stars instead of five is just because I um, felt like there was a few things missing that I felt like kids would need some support with. Next, I have some three-star books. This one's called The Not-So-Boring Letters of Private Nobody by Matthew Landis. And this is a story about a boy who's just obsessed with the Civil War. And his teacher gives him a, a assignment to work with another girl in his classroom on a Civil War assignment. And he's really devastated because he's an expert at it and he doesn't need anybody to be his partner. But he does it for a reason. And um, he gives them the name of this private that they need to investigate. And they discover a lot of different or new things that he had never known before about um, World War II, World or Civil War, excuse me. So... I give us a three just because I was a little bored. Um, I felt like there wasn't enough action for me. Um, it was a fine story and I just felt like it was a little more of a slog for me than um, I would have liked, but um, a good story. 
The next one is The Science of Breakable Things. And this is a story about a girl who joins up with two other kids in their classroom to do an egg drop competition. And they get together and try to figure out how they are going to drop an egg and win the contest. And um, this girl in the main character in this story is dealing with, um, I think her name is Twig. She is dealing with uh, a mom who has gone, is in depression. I mean, she's just not getting out of bed. She, it's just changed their family dynamics considerably. And so she's hoping that the money that if they could win from this contest would be helpful to do something for her mother to snap her out of it. Her father, of course, is helping her with therapy and other things just to help her understand what um, this kind of um, mental illness is doing with her family and how it affects her. Um, again, this is a good book, a fine book. I just felt like it was a little slow for me. Um, so I give it a three. It wasn't as, um, didn't move as fast as I would have thought. And I kind of picked it up sometimes thinking, okay, when's this going to be over? When are we going to get to it? So the science of breakable things. The next books are the books that I had to DNF, did not finish. And, um, just because I didn't finish them doesn't mean you might not love these books. So give them a try. But um, the first one was Smack Dab in the Middle of Maybe. And this is a story about a girl who's looking for her mother and she's got these clues and she runs away and she goes into this woods and I couldn't quite make sense of it to be perfectly honest. So I DNF'd it. I just did not connect to this book. This is by Joe Watson Hackle. A Wolf Called Wander by Roseanne Perry. I thought I'd love this book, but I, again, cannot connect it. It was way too much wolf talk. And um, for some reason, I just was like, I can't pick this up anymore. Now, I know a lot of people have enjoyed it, so give it a try. It's very much from the perspective of a wolf and his life in the wilderness. And so A Wolf Called Wander could be a, a right book for you, but it wasn't for me. Next is Oddity by Sarah Cannon. I thought this would be a really fun read. And let me try moving it over here. There you go. I have better light. Anyway, um, oh, it's an odd world. Very odd world. I couldn't connect. I ended up DNFing it. Um, Ada Roundtree is no stranger to dodging carniv carnivorous dumpsters, distracting zombie rabbits and marshmallows and instigating games of alien punk ball. Pretty weird. So give it a try if that's your kind of book, but I ended up DNFing this one too. I wanted to love this book, Rooting for Rafael Rosales. Um, it's by um, Curtis Scaletta, and I know he's good at writing baseball books, and he's from Minnesota. Um, it is about a boy who's from the Dominican Republic, and in the back, I was really impressed by Curtis's author's note where he says, you know, this is not my voice. I'm, I'm not Dominican Republic and who am I to write this story? But I did because I wanted to tell it. And it has a connection with um, Minnesota Twins and baseball. Um, I think I DNF'd it because, well, first of all, sports books are tough for me because I obviously don't always have that connection. I'm not a sports fan. Um, and so it's got to be a good sports book to connect me or catch me. But I um, I found that a lot of the Spanish words, he didn't really explain what they were and I couldn't get them in the context and I just got a little lost and, and fatigued by it. So I ended up DNFing this book. I do know some people really enjoyed this one. So give this a whirl and see what you think. And then finally, I took this one home. Carl Hyacin always writes great books and it's called Squirm, it's on our list, but I didn't read it because um, it has a Native American character in here. And one of the people on our committee said, really, it didn't really follow with a, a typical Native American person. It just was not, it fell flat. And um, it's just not a good representation for that um, kind of a, um, National, or for the indigenous people in our United States. So I felt like this wouldn't be one to promote. So Carl Hyacin, I didn't read this one. Maybe I'll read it later, but I didn't read it for Mod Heart Loveless because I just thought this is not the kind of book we would like to promote for the whole state. 
All right, hate to leave that on a bummer, um, sad note, but um, I have a whole nother stack of books, so hopefully I can gather them all up and read another, um, do another video sharing you all the books that I read um, in this next month coming up. So keep reading those Mod Heart Loveless books if you are on the committees and um, let me know in the comments below what you liked and what you didn't like about the books if you have any other um, considerations. So happy reading Mod Heart Loveless people and um, we'll see you later.